Do you have a stubborn or strong-willed child that seems to create more headaches than anything? And it's so difficult to know how to raise them effectively without making things worse. Maybe you have one of these kids or more, and they are fast approaching a harder stage of life. Maybe even those tumultuous teens. And you know that if you don't get this figured out soon, before they get stronger and bigger and wiser, that you are in big trouble. If this is you, or even if this is you with another loved one, today's episode will help you immensely. I know it did for me, and it continues to bear fruits. So let's jump into all these ways that we can build stronger connections, set those boundaries, and guide our children with love and understanding. Hey parents, welcome to Fulfillment Therapy. Do you want to raise your kids better and have a stronger marriage? Are you up late at night researching marriage and parenting tools and self-care tips? Do you start each day hoping for deeper connections and less chaos, but it ends with family arguments and going 12 different directions again? My name's Kendra, wife, mom, therapist, and growth enthusiast. It wasn't until I discovered how to fulfill my unmet needs that I was finally able to show up as my best self, as a spouse and parent. I realized that by meeting my needs, I could more fully meet the needs of my family with more energy and less resentment. In this podcast, I teach parents skills like boundary setting, prioritizing personal needs, communication, and claiming ownership. Just like my clients, you'll be shocked by the improvement in your marriage, parenting, and personal life when you focus on fulfilling your important unmet needs. Ready to prioritize yourself so you can quit mentally throat punching people? Then grab those earbuds and head outside and let's walk and talk. Welcome back to Fulfillment Therapy. We are on episode number 98. Getting so close to 100, right? Like I mentioned in the beginning, today we're talking about strong-willed children. This is definitely for parents, but it really is for any relationship. So keep that in mind as we talk about these things. As always, a very quick reminder that that 100th episode is coming up. Please listen to it immediately because there are so many things that it entails that are very time sensitive from giveaways to major discounts. And I'm talking major (laughs) that will only be there for 24 to 48 hours. I'm still trying to navigate that and figure that timeline out, but you will not want to miss it. Also, there are going to be a heap of videos and ads and all of these things that will bring you so much joy, I promise. That will be aired on April 1st, so don't miss it, my friends. Listen to it first thing in the morning for added benefits, and please tell me all the things that you think because I cannot wait to hear it. All right, let's go back to the episode on parenting strong-willed children. I don't know if you remember me talking a few episodes back about some marriage conflict my husband and I had, and that first part of it started because I was getting frustrated a little bit watching how he was responding to our son. Now, our son (laughs) can be a challenge. I love him dearly, but he definitely is strong-willed. and. He needs a lot more reminders, and he's not as proactive about doing things, and he can complain. Like, he he just drags his feet a lot when he doesn't have more control and when he's not calling the shots. So it's this constant struggle for us trying to figure out how to keep him accountable and also how to give him power, even especially if he's not using it that well. So anyway, that was part of our challenge in our conflict. Then as that conflict progressed, it happened because 
I felt like I didn't have power or control, and I recognized that, wow, I really am strong-willed myself, and I think there's a better way to manage this. Well, I don't even manage my own son, ideally, all the time, so I thought, you know what, this is a great opportunity for not only me, but for clients that have come in lately and have asked similar questions, like, how can I keep my child more accountable and avoid these power struggles that seem to be increasing in frequency? So I decided to go research myself, and I found out some amazing things. You've probably heard the book Parenting Your Strong-Willed Child or something like that. I can't remember the exact title. But there's a new one out called The New Strong-Willed Child. So this has updated research and a lot of amazing things in it, and it's by Dr. James Dobson. And I'll try to remember to put a link for that in the show notes. Well, this gave me a lot of incredible tips that I want to share with you today. But let's start with a definition. The definition of a strong-willed child is this. It's children who are determined, persistent, and often challenging to a parent due to their independent and assertive nature. If we're applying this to other people, I do think in this regard that I probably fit that bill. I didn't realize that before because growing up, I think I was kind of like a, can you call it a closet strong-willed child? I didn't want to cause problems to my mother because there were other kids in the family that were even stronger willed than I was. And I saw that that was challenging for her. So I just flew under the radar and I didn't really realize how strong-willed I really was until later in life. Okay, I want to talk about its impact on parenting, though. Think about power struggles you've had with your children and maybe discipline issues. For example, just last night, my son was really upset that we were going to turn off the internet at night because we go to bed a little earlier now than a couple of our children. And he could not accept that. He was so upset by it. And he kept asking why, no matter how many times we told him. And it was just very stubborn and belligerent about all of these things. And it was really hard to stay calm and not react. But we stuck to that boundary. And eventually, after quite some time, probably triple the time it would take another child, he left and let it go. Well, do you have similar power struggles like that or discipline issues with your kids? If you do, these tips are going to help. Okay, the first one is praise and reward positive behavior. This is what is going to encourage cooperation and obedience. I did this not that long ago, just intuitively with my son, and I started to compliment him more on how he's been working harder, and he's not needing as many reminders, especially as he's getting a little older, and he's being more cheerful, and he's working hard at school, and I don't even have to worry about asking him about his homework or checking in with him. He's just pretty independent that way. And I highlighted his independence, and I highlighted his independence as a very positive attribute. And I focus much less on how he's difficult and harder than the other kids. I do not want him to have that label and to feel like he is exhausting and difficult and hard to manage because that stays with him forever. And truly, by the end of this episode, you will see that this is actually a fantastic attribute for parents to have in their children because of what it creates in the future. And I'll explain more in a little bit. So setting boundaries is also a huge part of this book. And honestly, almost everything I talked about. It's really important to set clear and consistent boundaries in order to maintain that discipline. What I noticed, again, intuitively and through trial and error, is that my son likes to be part of the planning, and he really wants to know in advance, more than even my other kids, even though he doesn't necessarily make plans himself or he's not that busy, but it just really helps him feel like he has more control, and that structure is very helpful to him. The other thing that's very important is communication. If you have that open and honest communication with your strong-willed child, that fosters that understanding and respect. For example, I've been thinking a lot lately about how I want to give him more control because I know that he needs that. 
but I'm not really sure how to do that when he often doesn't use that control wisely, like with tech boundaries or bedtime or or even things like church, like he really fights us on church. He used to fight us on school. He doesn't so much now. It, it seems to cycle through the things that he fights us on. When he was younger, it was actually, we have another child, same thing. It's about changing clothes, like wearing different clothes each day. Like that is such a battle every single time, no matter how long it's been a boundary. And it's like, no, sorry, buddy, this is a non-negotiable. So that was like a younger issue. And it seems to change as they go through different stages, like what it is. So I've been exploring how I can communicate these things with him and collaboratively talk about how he can have more power and how I can trust him to use that power wisely. Because without that communication, I can see how he's growing in resentment. And the more that his resentment grows, the more his stubbornness grows. It's very important to communicate and give them a sense of control. All right, the next part is flexibility. It's very important to have structure and it's important to have flexibility. For example, I mentioned church. I've explored asking him stuff like, well, our family goes to church weekly and we go to school daily. Like we have those things that we just do in our in our community culture, in our family culture. But let's talk about your need for flexibility. What feels fair to you? And let's collaborate and find something that works best for both of us so we both feel like we have some control. I think this is a tricky one for parents because they're not willing to bend at all. And that creates more and more resistance in children. And then in time, often when they're 18, that relationship is so broken and there is very little trust especially on the side of the child to the parent, that they're not able to salvage that relationship later in life. So this is the prime time to practice these things. Next thing I want to talk about is patience and persistence. These attributes are really important to nurture when you're dealing with a strong-willed child because it can take time, and I promise you it requires so much patience. But like I always say, Marriage and parenting is the best refiner's fire that you will ever experience, and it will rub off your rough edges. These strong-willed children, that challenge is not happening to you. It is literally happening for you, to refine you. So thank that child for what they are teaching you. And I really do thank my children for these things. And they know that I'm serious. I'm not being condescending. Now I want to talk about nurturing emotional development. It's important to empathize with your strong-willed child and try to be empathetic. Talk about how you understand their perspective and their emotions. I tell this to my son all the time. I talk to him about how I understand because I'm also the happiest when I have more independence and control, and so I can relate to him. And I give him some examples of how that is. I even tell him that in my marriage with his dad, that that's been a struggle for me because I am learning to share power and I don't always understand how to do that. And the same thing is happening in my relationship with him. And we're trying to figure that out together and we don't always know how to do it right. So as you communicate that and empathize with them, there's this softening. And I notice this all the time and I wish I could remember to do it more because that's when I get more of his buy-in. That second part of the empathy is validating him. Validating your strong-willed child, even if you disagree with their behavior. For example, like, I am so tired of the church battle since he was little and the tech battle. It's like they never want to go to church or often they never want to go to school and they always want to use tech and they never want to do chores. Like, Those are just standard things, but some kids push back way more than the other kids. And just remember, empathize and validate. This is a normal part of their development. They are communicating their frustrations, and maybe not in the way you would want, but it's important to be patient through that. Another thing you can do to help your strong-willed child is to build that strong parent-child relationship. 
One way to do this is spending quality time together. Do activities that they enjoy. For example, I was really struggling coming up with something for my son and I to do together. I would throw out so many ideas and he just didn't want to do any of them. He's very specific about what he likes and most of it is computer games or games that I'm not interested in at all. So I was trying to find something that wouldn't feel like pulling teeth for me. And I found pickleball. And that went really well for a while until it got cold. So now that it's cold, I'm having to try to find other ways to engage with him. And most of the time, it's just sitting and talking. And sometimes it's baking together. Sometimes it's just sitting next to him while he's playing something and just talking to him. With my other kids, I do specific things like we have a show that's just for us together to watch and no one else. Or one child I go on walks with more than all the other ones. And two of the children I just go to the gym with. So there's certain things that only certain children love. And That's a way to really foster that relationship, as well as build that trust and respect just as that relationship is fostered. This gives them security and helps them attach in a healthy way, which will aid them in all of their relationships. Another important thing is to support their interests and their goals. How can you provide encouragement in this way? One thing I was thinking about with this was the summer. I'm a little nervous about the summer (laughs) because in the past, it's just easier to get into these bad habits because I might be working for part of that or whatever it might be. So to have a collaborative family conversation and with your strong-willed child, maybe even previous to that, doing it one-on-one, something like, what should our schedule be like this summer so we can have healthy screen time or socializing or work time? And you do this well before summer. That way you think about it for a while and you can think about what their needs are and they will feel more of a sense of control. And then make sure you offer that encouragement and that support in the things that they're requesting or wanting and you follow through with that. So these were a lot of general tips that they gave in this book and I loved all these things. I think I was naturally doing a lot of them because I just kept asking myself, okay, what would I want in this situation? Or what have I noticed in my child that creates that softening of that heart or that greater collaboration? And I just did those things more often. A quick recap of some of those things from the book is recognize their need for independence and don't try to break them or shame them for it. Learn to collaborate with them when you set boundaries and be consistent with them with routines. But remember, it's also still important to be flexible when needed. For example, it could be like church. Maybe when I talked to him, he said, you know, I just want, I don't know, like two to four times a year that if I say I don't want to go to church, you can just let me stay home. And if you decide that that's fair, the two of you, then stick to that and You can both let go of that control because you recognize you have some control. Remember to talk about the positive aspects of their strong will and how it's going to be their superpower in the future. I said that I would swing back around to this, and I'm excited to talk about this for a second. Strong will translates later in life to resilience and determination. Now, it might even show up at younger ages for sure, but I think they use that power more wisely as they have your positive example of structure and flexibility and collaboration and things like that. But as they are raised well and taught that it doesn't need to be something to be ashamed of, then they can become, like I've mentioned, one of my heroes is Louis Zamperini in that book Unbroken, in that movie Unbroken. You want your child to have that deep iron core of determination and resilience. Because when they face hardship and adversity, they will actually thrive. They will be the leaders. They will be a force, a powerful force for good if they are brought up in a healthy way. So you are training little leaders, my friends, future world leaders. And that is a sacred and honorable role that you've been given. 
that you've been entrusted to. So what are you going to do with it? Pray that you will have the wisdom to find the balance between that firm parent authority and allowing room for your child's autonomy so that they can grow in confidence. Remember always to cultivate love and patience and understanding. Not try to squash it. Like with Louis Zamperini, the more his superiors tried to squash it, even through torture and all of those things, the more it created a greater determination in him. I promise you, you will not successfully squash it. So really stop trying. That is not a helpful approach. But people that are not strong-willed seem to always think that's the right approach. All right, I want to end with a very quick tip and a few quotes. And they're all from the book. This one says, Strong-willed children often possess remarkable qualities of leadership and determination, which, when properly nurtured, can lead to great success in life. I just mentioned something like that. I totally agree with that. The next one says, Parenting a strong-willed child is not about breaking their spirit, but guiding their energy towards positive outcomes. Wow. I have not read these for a while, but that's exactly what I was just saying, too. I love that. (laughs) Here's the next one. The key to parenting a strong-willed child lies in finding the balance between firmness and empathy, setting boundaries while remaining emotionally connected. So you can set boundaries, but stay connected. Okay, here's the last two quotes. Understanding the underlying motivations and needs of strong-willed children is essential for effective discipline and communication. So what are their motives and what are their needs? If you don't know that, you're not going to be effective in your communication or your discipline. The last one is this. Parenting a strong-willed child is a journey of growth and learning for both parent and child, requiring patience, resilience, and unconditional love. Don't you love that? Patience, resilience, and unconditional love. And that's a growth journey for both the parent and the child. In closing, here are your five rapid fire tips. Number one, choose your battles wisely, focusing on essential issues and being flexible on the less critical ones. Number two, stay calm and composed during conflicts. Model that emotional regulation and that problem solving skills for your child because they need it. Number three, offer choices whenever possible to empower your strong-willed child and encourage cooperation. Give them ridiculous choices, my friends, all the time. Love and Logic talks a lot about this too. Always give them choices, even about stupid things, because they love it. Number four, seek support from other parents or professionals who have experience with strong-willed children in order to gain insights and strategies for managing these challenging behaviors. Number five, celebrate and affirm your child's strengths and accomplishments regularly. That's underlined in my mind here, regularly, to build their self-esteem and their confidence. Make sure you are pointing out the good, even when you want to pull your hair out especially then, I would say. I know that these five tips and this breakdown of this book is really going to help you if you have that strong-willed child or spouse or another loved one. These can apply to any relationship. And I also have some more empathy for my husband and dealing with a strong-willed wife and son bless his soul, and it's probably helping him be refined even more. So maybe this is perfect for him. My friends, you have an incredible day, and don't forget to check out all the things in the show notes and on fulfillmenttherapy.org, and sign up for that Costa Rican retreat while you're at it, because that window is rapidly closing. Take care, and we'll see you back here in a few days. friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, chances are someone else would too. Would you take 30 seconds to share this with a friend who's looking for greater family fulfillment? 
And while you're sharing, tell me what you think about the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. It refuels me when I hear this podcast is helping you, no matter what your house or your hair looks like. I'll meet you back here every Monday and Thursday morning for more episodes. Until then.